Miniacs! In this episode of Diva Diorama, we'll be taking a look at the Make It Mini Kitchen! I couldn't resist getting it on sale from Target online and received it a while ago. I've had plenty of time to admire its gorgeous packaging, but now it's high time I got it unboxed and set up. As a bonus, I'll be showing you how you can reuse some of the Make It Mini packaging to make the perfect accessory or accessories for this kitchen. So keep watching. So I was able to remove all of the tape that was on either side of the box here. And then there was another piece of tape here. I can open that now because I removed the tape. When I tried to pull it out from there, uh, it wouldn't let me because on this side, there's still some tape that needs to be removed here. So I'm gonna remove that. Hopefully we can preserve this gorgeous packaging in case I need to store this away at some point. Let's pull it. Oh no, no. There was a piece of tape here and there's a piece of tape here that also needs to be removed. Okay, so now it's a lot of tape. Now we can just finally pull it out of the package here. Yay, and I saved that gorgeous box. Miniverse does like its little pamphlets in three languages to view recipe videos. Oh, okay. How to play with resin before you start. Customize your kitchen. Okay. How to play with UV light oven. Okay, show it. Store it. Set it. Oh, battery installation. Okay, so we're going to need three AA batteries. And these are all the contents. Fun! Let's see what we've got here. Look at how gorgeous that is. This has got nothing in it. This is just a false back there. And we've got all of this to undo, I guess. So let's go ahead and undo that. Okay, so I've got the tabs undone. I was unable to really pull that, so we're gonna have to pull it from the front here. This thing is really well packaged. I mean, nothing is going anywhere in this thing. Here, this just needs to go through there. The first part came off really easily, oh, because of this. Wow, this thing is like packaged to the hilt. Okay, that had a little piece of tape there. This went through there. And now we've got just baked. Get your mitts off of me! And this, yeah, it just pulls away. Oh, wow. Wow. That is some impressive packaging. Like, super protected here. This plastic seems quite good. Quite sturdy plastic. Pretty thick stuff. Let's take this off. Okay, so I got all this stuff out. I really wanted these donuts because I never did get donuts in the Cafe Series 1 capsules that I purchased. And you've got your berry cereal donuts and your cocoa berry milk recipe cards, which is cute. You've got glaze, I guess, for the donuts and strawberries. And you've got ice. And then we've got these two oven mitts. These are pretty adorable. Oh, that's a bummer that that doesn't actually function. That would have been cute. Make those actually loop. But they actually feel like silicone, which is kind of cool. Let's see here. Neat. Does that come out? Oh yeah, it does. And then we've got what looks like a refrigerator there. Pretty nice plastic here. It's pretty substantial plastic. It's nothing cheapy. I love this drawer. Is the other one like that as well? Oh no, it's a plain drawer. I think the utensil drawer needs to go on top. Yeah, like that. I prefer that. Oh, neat. And you've got two little shelves there. Let's see what we've got in here. Oh, got more tape we've got to remove. This thing was taped up the wazoo. What is wazoo anyway? <laughs> See what's inside this cabinet. This is a great hinge. I mean, nothing's gonna break off of that. Okay, so we've got some kind of surprise here. Our tweezers, or tongs, 
And we've got berry ring cereal. Too cute. Look at those berries. They're so happy. So cute. Happy stuff. Berry fun tic-tac-toe. Just like a real cereal box when you were kids. So berry good. Let's read the nutrition facts here. Happy stuff, it says, serving size, one awesome mini, berry goodness, 100% daily value, rings, 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 100%, total yum, 100%, daily value is based on how much it's tiny quotient. <laughs> Again, I don't know what that means, it's tiny quotient. And we've got the cereal box that opens. Oh, look at that. Blueberry, strawberry, and raspberry, I guess, would be the blue, right? Blueberry would be the purple ones. Too cute. Oh, and we've got a nozzle for something. Oh, for this, glaze, which I think is for the um, donuts. Have we seen this kind of glaze before, I wonder? Let's see if it says anything interesting here. Mini stuff. Okay. Says serving size, one fun mini, sunshine 100%, vitamin fun 100%, total smiles 100%. Daily value is based on how much fun it is to make this mini. Cute. Sunny days glaze. All right, so that's for the donuts, I guess. If you choose, I guess you can pretty much do whatever you want. I don't think we've seen a cocoa berry milk before. It's been a while since I've seen this kind of bottle. I think the last time I saw it was maybe in a uh, first cafe series, I wonder. All right, good stuff we have here. Serving size, one fun mini. Total yum, 100%. Berry goodness, 100%. Cocoa cool. 100%. Daily value is based on how much fun it is to make this mini. That is so cute. I love the coloring on that. The, the graphics are really cute. This one is like all shrink wrap. There's no sticker on it. So that's a pretty, I guess, special packaging there. And here we've got a little placeholder. I'm going to treat these like tongs, like cooking tongs. Yeah, let's put that there. Got a spoon here. Oh, look, look at this. How does that work? How sweet is that? Wow, this is like plastic, this paper. That's neat. Just baked flour, sugar, tea. I kind of like the yellow. It's very sunny, very happy. And that comes out that way. Shopping list, coffee, milk. Very cute. That's pretty sweet. Look at these. This is, this is neat. I like that detail. Gives it structure and it looks very stylish, very modern. Oh, gonna need a screwdriver for that. Got the batteries in and we turned it to the line there, which I'm assuming the zero is off. Looks like that comes on. Okay, well, let's stock this baby. Let's start with the cabinets. Since these are clear cabinets, I think I want to keep it kind of simple because you're going to be able to see what's inside. Got these from Cafe Series 1. I think it'll be cute to kind of keep it kind of simple here. I've got the bowls from the cereals. Some of them were from the uh, display boxes. And we've got some ramen bowls. We've also got our platters. So let's put that there. We've also got rectangular platters. I'm gonna stock up this fridge. We've got bags of ice in there. Let's put some fruit. We've got these fruits. And of course, we've got raspberries and blackberries. We can put maybe some veggies. More veggies, these are tomatoes. And we've got even more fruit. Those are also from the Cafe Series one. Okay, we've got straws and then I've got a mason jar. So I'm just gonna put that in there. Got another mason jar that I figure we can put some tongs. This, our serving spoon, put that there. We've got like knives and spoons. Put some forks in there. These utensils, you can put that in there. Mm, we've even got like ramen spoons. Okay, so there's that. Let's see, let's put snacky snack papers. We've got some of these and maybe a coaster, that in there. We've got 
chopsticks. And I don't know about you guys, but I like to store things in my oven. So we've got a couple of oven things you can put in there. I guess these we can put in there since they don't hang. I wish they hung somewhere. See, we've got all of these, including the uh, silicone looking mat. We'll put that there. Kind of fits perfectly. Put more things on the counter. Let's put that there. Let's take this guy that we got, this in here. We've got these that I thought would be cute there for a little detail. Let's put something up there, like a cake stand. I don't know, should we go with yellow or red? I don't know if I like the red, maybe? For the yellow, maybe we can draw the eye up there, get the red. And uh, let's put a little plant up there. Mm, maybe I do like the yellow then. So it doesn't detract from the plant there. We've got our little cards here. You can put that there. And what kitchen is complete without a couple of cookbooks? These are little cookbooks that I made using recycled materials from our capsules. So this is Diner Series 2. And we've got the collector's guide pages in here the recipe cards so we've got all of that in there we've got a, a jacket even all made out of recycle materials this is the cafe series too again we've got all the recipe cards in there so let's put these two little books up here as well not only do these little cookbooks make great use of what would otherwise become trash but they're a really fun addition to the Make It Mini Kitchen and are simple to make requiring just some basic tools and perhaps a little bit of patience. To make one of these cookbooks, I'm using one of the collector's guides that comes inside every Make It Mini food capsule. This one is from the Cafe Series 2, Wave 2. I'm just gonna straighten it out as much as possible by bending each fold backwards to counteract the original creases in the paper. With our paper straightened out, I'm going to cut it apart. The Series 2 Collector's Guides already have dotted lines indicating where to separate all the recipes. So I'm going to cut along the lines using this metal ruler and utility knife. I am cutting across the length of each card. And now I'm going to cut across the width, making sure I am as careful as possible. This blade is sharp, friends. Now that I have cut out all the pieces, I am just using my fingernail to straighten out each one as much as possible. I'm just running my fingernails against all the little bends in each piece. These will be the pages of our cookbook, but now we need a bifold that will connect these pages to the inside of the hardcover. For that, I am going to use this Cafe Series 2 Wave 1 Collector's Guide. I'm looking for two graphics that are side by side and I'm going to need two sets of those. So I'm cutting out this one and this one. Now I'm folding both of them perfectly in half with the graphics on the inside. Then I'm going to place the pages of our cookbook in between those bifolds. We're going to be gluing the pages together, but I find that dividing the stack into three parts works best. So I'm just going to divide the number of pages roughly into thirds, so that we end up with three stacks of pages. I'm going to gather up a stack here and work on straightening it out as much as I can on the side we are going to glue together. So that would be the left side. Now that I've got the pages as straight as possible on that side, I am going to use a couple of clothespins to hold the stack together. I'm placing the clothespins pretty close to the end of the edge that we're going to glue, but I'm leaving just a little bit of a margin, like about an eighth of an inch. I'm applying tacky glue to the edge here. I'm using tacky glue because I think it'll work better with this glossy coated paper. Using my silicone brush tool, I'm going to work the glue into the paper a bit, even kind of poking the tip of the brush in between the pages to get some of the glue in between the pages. I'm gonna take my time working the glue onto and into the pages all along the length of this edge. 
With that done, on this first stack, I'm going to set that aside to dry for a bit while I repeat the process with the other two stacks of pages. With all three stacks done, I'm going to go back to the first stack. Now that it has dried a bit, I'm going to clamp the stack in between two credit cards so that it will dry flat. I'm wrapping a small piece of parchment over the end of the edge before sandwiching it between the credit cards to ensure the pages do not stick to the credit cards. I'm setting those pages aside to dry for a while and in the meantime, we'll work on the hard cover of the book. For this, we'll need a printout of the PDF in the description box below. I'm just roughly cutting out the pieces with some scissors and I'm gluing them onto a piece of scrap chipboard that I have. I'm using glue stick because it's the easiest and it won't warp or pucker the lightweight copy paper. Plus it dries really quickly. These are the pieces for the hardcover and this is the template for the book jacket. I've allowed the pieces to dry for a beat, so I'm cutting them out using my metal ruler and utility knife. I'm going to hit the inner corners of this template freehand to hopefully make cutting out the rest of it a bit easier. Alternatively, you can cut the pieces out using a silhouette or a Cricut as I did for these pieces here. The SVG file for die cutting machine is also available in the description box below. Again, these are the pieces for the front and back hard cover of the book. They're cut out of half millimeter thick chipboard and I've got two of them for each cover, which I am going to glue together so that they align as perfectly as possible. I'm going to put them under something heavy to dry. And while they're drying, I'm moving on to preparing the paper that will cover them. You can use just about any kind of paper that you want, as long as it's not thinner than say, copy paper. Here I've got a piece of cardboard lining from the display box for this series that I want to use. It's covered with this paper that has the cafe series graphics on it. It's got kind of a plasticky coating on it that I think would work really well for the structure and durability of the book. And lucky for me, it peels pretty easily and fairly cleanly off of the cardboard it's glued on. So I was able to peel off the whole sheet here to use. I'm going to place the template for the book cover on top of the paper, using the frame to ensure that I cut out the part of the design that I want. This looks good. You can trace the entire template onto the paper, but I'm just going to mark the angles and edges and leave the straight edges to my ruler and utility knife. I'm gonna ensure that I get this part of the template cut out correctly because this point will also essentially be where we will fold this paper. So I am paying special attention to cutting out these four corners. With the cover paper cut out, I can now fold each side using those corners as a guide. I'm using my metal ruler to span across two of those corners on one side of the paper. Using my dotting or embossing tool, I am drawing along that line in order to score the paper to make it easier to get a clean fold. I'm repeating that process, folding all the other three sides to create a space where we will paste our cardboard covers. I grabbed the two covers that I had drying under my one, two, three blocks and check to see how they fit in this space. We want them to be flush with either side of the space created by the folds. Now I'm adding glue to one side of the first card and am carefully placing it in the space. Again, ensuring that the three sides of the cover fit up against the three intersecting folds here. I am repeating that with the other cover on the other side of this cover paper. I press down firmly on both covers before moving on to folding down and gluing the sides of the cover. I'm using Elmer's glue because the chipboard is very porous, so I think it'll take the thinner Elmer's glue more readily than the tacky glue. But use whatever you have. I'm just making sure I spread it as thoroughly as I can so that the cover paper adheres well. First, I'll glue down the two long sides making sure that the flap makes contact with the cover paper in the center area. In fact, I'm going to use some clothespins to clamp the paper to create a really good bond. I'll leave it there while I glue the other side and then the other two shorter sides. The small pieces of parchment prevent the glue from sticking onto the clothespins. 
Now that I've got all four sides glued down, I removed the clothespins so that I can place the cover under my heavy weight to dry thoroughly. As that dries, I'm going to work on the book jacket. Again, you can use just about any paper that you like, but I'm going to show you how you can use paper from the Make It Mini packets. So I've got some packets here that are in decent condition. And I'm just going to open them up at their seams to give us some flat sheets to work with. This next step is totally optional, but I believe it makes a difference. We're going to use an iron to iron out the wrinkles in these pieces of paper. I've got my dry, no steam iron here set pretty high, on cotton to be exact. I put the packet paper in between two sheets of parchment, and then I just pull the packet paper out from under the iron like this. I'm just gonna do it a few times, pulling the paper in different directions. We don't need to try to get all of the wrinkles out, just enough so that the paper is relatively straightened out without burning the paper in the process. I'm going to do it with the rest of these as I'm not sure which ones we'll end up using. I think I'm going to use this Happy Sun Farms piece for the front cover of my jacket. So I'm grabbing the book jacket template that we cut out earlier and I'm using the large rectangle on the right side of the template to frame out how I want the graphic to look on the cover. That looks pretty good. So now I'm going to trace some small registration marks onto the paper using the template. At this point, all I really need to do is trace the corners here at the right hand end of this jacket and draw a couple of marks at the top and bottom here and these two notches here marking the center point. With those two notches drawn, I can now use them to cut a straight edge using my metal ruler and utility knife. Let's set that aside and grab another sheet to use for the back of the jacket cover. Let's use this Made Fresh and again use my book jacket template to figure out how I want the graphics to look on that back cover. And again I'm going to make my registration marks at the corners, at the top and the bottom and then at this center point. And then once again, with those two center points marked, I'm going to cut the paper using my ruler and utility knife. Now we want to paste these two pieces of packet paper side by side onto another sheet of paper. I'm using a piece of scrap printer paper here, but you can use any paper you want. Before I apply glue to the back of this packet paper, I am folding it just outside of the registration marks I made on the front to show me roughly where I need to apply glue on the back. I'm using tacky glue because this packet paper is slightly glossy, so I think it'll adhere better. But again, feel free to try whatever you have. As per usual, I am being judicious with the amount of glue I'm applying and I'm using my rubber tool to spread it out into as even a layer as possible throughout the entirety of the space on the back of this paper. I am paying particular attention to this edge of the paper to ensure that I get good coverage there. Now that I've got the glue on this first piece of packet paper, I am flipping it over and onto my piece of scrap printer paper, making sure that I've got enough space next to it for the second piece. I'm using my brayer to adhere the packet paper onto the copy paper. If you do not have this tool, use your fingers to smooth things out as much as possible, as this will help resolve any remaining wrinkles in that packet paper. I'm repeating this process with my Made Fresh packet paper. I'm going to carefully place it next to the previous packet paper so that the two meet at the center point and that the horizontal registration marks are all aligned. The marks for the top and then the marks for the bottom of the book jacket, or at least roughly aligned. I'm going over both with my brayer again for good measure before I set this aside under something heavy. While that dries a beat, I'm going to cut the packet for the spine of the book jacket. I've got my packet paper here and my book jacket template. I am using the long skinny rectangle here on the template to frame the part of the packet graphics that I want to use. Then I'm going to trace vertical registration marks on either side of the template void here. 
and use my ruler to meet up those registration marks and cut the paper with my utility knife. Now I'm just checking the sliver of paper against the spine of my book jacket. I want to be sure to be able to place it how I want within the book jacket. So I'm using my template again to redraw the marks of the very outer corners of the jacket rectangle. Now I'm applying an even coat of tacky glue to the back of the spine paper here. And then I'm placing it onto the center point of my book jacket making sure that the parts of the graphics that I want are between the horizontal registration lines of the book jacket. Let's set that aside once again under something heavy to dry and go back to working on the pages of the book. I'm going to remove the three sets of pages from between the credit cards and stack them in the correct order so that we can glue them all together in the same way we glued the individual pages together. I get the stack as straight as possible along the side that is glued and then use clothespins to clamp that edge, leaving a little bit of a margin there and then apply tacky glue and work it onto and a little into this edge with my silicone brush tool. I'm going to allow that to set for just a bit before wrapping the end with parchment and sandwiching it between my credit cards so it can dry completely. Overnight would really be ideal. The pages are dry now, so I'm removing them from the credit cards. I'm going to apply glue at the joint in between each of the pages to reinforce the book using a silicone brush that has a very fine point, but you could also use a toothpick. For any pages that might be loose, I apply glue to the very edge and stick it back into the book. Once that is done, I will once again clamp the book in between my credit cards to help compress the pages flat. I've given it a moment to sit like that and now I'm going to glue the pages into the book cover that we put together earlier. I've got my cover here so I'm just dry fitting how I am going to glue the pages into it. First making sure that the graphics on the cover are oriented the way I want them. I want this side to be the front cover, so I'm going to insert the pages into the book here. And then I'm going to use the three open edges of the book cover here as a guide to where I should paste the pages into the cover. There should be about a one millimeter margin between the book cover and the pages around these three edges. Now I'm going to apply tacky glue to the very first page here, making sure that I get really good coverage but being careful not to get glue anywhere else. Then I'm going to place that glue side down onto the inside of the cover in the same manner we did the dry fit. My main objective is to have that one millimeter margin around the three sides. This should ensure that the pages are centered on the cover. I'm going to place a piece of parchment behind this first page that I glued just to make sure that any overflow of glue does not stick to the subsequent pages. Now I'm going to glue on the back cover, so flip to the back side of the pages and apply glue in the same manner there. Again, once I've got a nice layer of glue there, I press the page onto the back cover, also paying attention that I keep that one millimeter margin going around the page. I place a piece of parchment here too. I'm going to lightly compress the sandwich, allowing the loose paper at the spine to bow out. It might not look right, but trust me, it will. We'll be able to shape it at the very end once the pages in the book are secured into the cover. That said, we want to once again clamp the book into the credit cards, so to compress everything together while it dries. Now that the book has had some time to dry, I remove it from the credit cards and am working on shaping the spine, gently opening the book a bit and pressing the spine flat with my fingers, which creates a crease on either side of the spine. I want to accentuate those creases because it's really what gives the book a realistic shape. So I'm just continually pressing on the spine to flatten the paper there evenly, and now I'm even using my embossing tool to score those lines. I'm just running the tip of my tool along that crease to help it along. With the book done, we can finish up the book jacket. Now that our collage of packet papers has had some time to dry, we can now cut out the jacket shape. 
I'm butting my metal ruler up against the registration marks I drew using the template and then using my utility knife to cut across them. First the vertical lines and now the horizontal lines. With my jacket cut out, I'm going to use the book to shape the jacket. And I grabbed the wrong one. This is the Diner Series book, but it's basically identical. So I'm placing it into the jacket and lining up the spine of the book to the spine of the jacket. Once that looks good, I am using the edges of the book to start some folds here at either end of the jacket. With those two folds now indicated, I take off the jacket so that I can fold the jacket all the way to help it keep its shape. With the shape of the jacket formed, I can now put it back onto my book. At this point, you can call the book done, but I like to do one last round of clamping of the book just to keep it nice and flat. These things are small and light, so don't have the weight of many large pages to keep it closed. So I find the extra clamping makes a difference. Here's the Diner Series 2 book that I had made previously. It has a book jacket that I made from the Diner 2 Series display box. As you can see, it is relatively compacted, having been clamped for a day or so. And there you have it, mini axe. Real hardcover make it mini cookbooks complete with book jackets made from recycled materials. It's a super cute accessory for your make it mini kitchen. Make one for each one of your favorite make it mini food series for yourself or as a gift for your collector friends. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, please tap that like button. It really helps me out. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified when I post my next video. Thank you for watching and remember, growing old is unavoidable, but growing up is optional. So do something fun today. Until next time, bye!